My name is Michael Freeman. I'm a sophomore planning to major in film here at Morehouse College, and I'm here to tell you a little bit about my school. Morehouse College was founded in 1867 and is located in Atlanta, Georgia. One interesting thing about Morehouse College, the only predominantly African-American all-male college in the United States, and has produced distinguished alumni, including Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And now for some fun facts about everybody's favorite HBCU, GAMU. Co-creator and executive producer Felicia D. Henderson is taking you behind the scenes with the Quads Office Hours next. Please join me tonight on Office Hours where I will be talking to the illustrious, amazing Ruben Santiago Hudson. Hudson, I'm sorry that again. I gotta start the whole thing. Start telling lies and couldn't get it up. I know. Right <laughs> <up my> <laughs> okay, so here we are at the end of the season. Ten powerful episodes leading all to this one, um, which in some ways was the easiest and the hardest to write, because I knew that by the time we got to episode ten, I would have to be in L.A. doing post. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be on set to see, you know, as I was writing, because um, I wrote along with our writer's trainee, Rose McAleese, I, I wrote the season finale. And writing this scene in particular where truly we know what friendship is. Okay. And I know you guys know what scene I'm talking about, so let's just get right in there and talk yeah. about it. Um, you know, what about your personal relationship, um, just as actors, as brothers, as people who respect what each other do. What, how did that come to play in this scene? <laughs> um, I've thought about, obviously, the relationship between the characters. Um, that particular moment brought me closer to Mr. Hudson you know, as a friend, as a colleague, um, and I'm, I mean, a fan, <laughs> but to be, uh, to be working with him. So it, it really took me to another space because I didn't know how it was going to turn out. I knew there was going to be a place I needed to go, and Ruben shared something with me that, that really helped me toward the, 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 the other half of the day. He said some things to me, just talking, character mm -hmm. stuff, just talking about our storyline and stuff like that. And I want him to leave, but I need him to stay. Yes. And then that even took me even further at that point. Yes. And it was a, a collective conversation we were having. I was like, I really, really now understand even more. Like, we're brothers. As chapter advisor, I officially announced the commencement of new flames into our beloved brotherhood. Until you are no longer of this earth, you will be men of Sigma Mu Kappa. It's a... Uh... Uh, it's, it's a challenge navigating the human condition, the dilemmas that yes. human beings have in finding your place as a friend and as a, as a person that to help support you. We yeah. all know tragedy and we know pain and we know yeah. loss. And so, but it, we all handle each situation differently. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, Diamond could come off in that scene like a knucklehead. Please, you don't need to babysit me. I ain't gonna wear my... Man, I ain't gonna wear... It's, you know, from our points of view as, as your writing staff, I don't know if actors who of, of your caliber know the pleasure to say whatever I put on this page, they can play. Mm. Because that is not always true. In fact, it's more often not true than it is where you can, like, be in your own little bubble and you're like, yes, oh my... He can't play that. Delete, delete, <laughs> delete, 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 delete. delete. <laughs> you know, so just, it happens all the time. I mean, there's, a, there's a simple moment in another episode, excuse me for cutting you off, but there's no like problem. a simple moment where I'm standing behind him and we find out some news that we both like, that we, <laughs> you know, about a foe of ours. We basically <laughs> just looked in the direction, like if, if he's there just looking this way, he knew that that's a look to him and me, and I didn't even look, I just touched his shoulder. You know, so it was like, that said the whole thing. Yeah, you guys have <laughs> so, so many of those diet. wonderful moments. And it, and it tells the whole story, but like, oh, yeah. you know, uh, oh, suck it, suck it now. Yeah. 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 It's well, you know what, like you said, scenes that have happened in, in the, oh. the cigar bar, because that's where we're shooting all of our talkback 
um, episodes on our show at the City Cigar Club here mm -hmm. in Atlanta. We thank Julius, the owner, so much for letting us be here. But in this environment, this wonderful cigar club, there have been lots of interesting moments between these, these two men. <laughs> it seems like as soon as they get in, they get really comfortable here. Hey, turn that up! What are we celebrating? Life. What well, you got good news? Best. Huh? Huh? Your boss huh? in the mission. Huh? A day, a month, forever. I don't know, but I'm in the mission. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah. You know, they just, stuff just starts coming out. Everything feels very <laughs> relaxed. What is it about you know, this environment? First, this is our hang, you know. Yeah. And, and I don't even smoke cigars. Cecil Diamond doesn't even smoke cigars, but he yes. loves uh, the environment. Yes. So he just comes because he knows people are going to be there and he, right. he can hold court. Having gone through a season two mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. of the ups and downs <laughs> of it, um, what do you think? How do you feel about it overall? And what do you hope to see in season three? <sighs> Season two has been... <laughs> it's been a lot. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a lot. And knowing what, you know, what yeah. ends up being, I'm kind of like, okay, really? Really, y'all? Yeah, <laughs> really yeah. what else was, you going to do to Really? Else? You, <laughs> you let everybody shine this season. I'm not crazy. I am you. I'm you. I'm not going to be a Sigma Mu Kappa now. How the hell am I going to tell my father that? <laughs> I nearly died planning your marching band, and you have the nerve to ask me to come back. Uh, my dad died when I was four. I don't remember much. The things I do remember, they were good. No, I'm not. She's okay. Not. Stop. <laughs> you threaten my kids again. And I'm gonna kill you. What is your problem? Did you get passed over for a promotion by a better qualified woman? Really, if you're trying to put together a cast that where everyone is talented mm. and then you want to see what everyone can do. It's like I was saying to E. Raj, like, just hold on. He, it, what you're going to do, it's coming <laughs> because we wanted the season to arc out a certain way. How am I supposed to know if I could be in this house without her? If y'all won't let me be. So we knew that the stuff that was gonna be powerful for his character that was gonna take him to the mm. you know, next level yes. was going to come at the end of the season. But I would be remiss mm. if I did not ask you to talk about your directorial debut Whoop. on The Quad, episode Whoop. two or four, our Driving While Black episode. Speak on it, my brother. All I can say is it was a <laughs> blessing to, to have the opportunity and it was, you guys have been pushing me to direct and the television, you know, my heart and soul is directing theater, and yes. you guys have taken me to a whole nother realm. There was no place else to do my directorial debut mm -hmm. than the quad, because this is the family. No one is going to support me more than, than at the quad, yes. so I really owe a huge thanks to you for pushing me and believing that I could do it and going of in there course. and fighting with all the powers that be to say, he can, and if we don't get him, somebody else going to have him, right. and we're going to look like fools. And I was like, no, I ain't going nowhere else. <laughs> so, so to do the quad, and, and I demanded a lot from my, my actors. And, and what they I, gave it to what you. I thought that I could offer them to be supportive and, and also to help them get to certain places by little things that I've learned from George C. Wolfe or Lloyd Richards or Douglas Turner Ward throughout my career yes. in the last 40 years. Oh, I, I, and it just is such a beautiful episode in the performances. The writer of the episode, Randy Huggins, one of our co-EPs. Uh, Randy. Yes, hey. he was the one who pointed out to me, he's like, Felicia, you had a African-American male writer. He's like, you have African-American male director in Ruben. You have an African-American male DP. And our editor is an African-American male. He's like, it's just, you just made sure. I was like, yeah, now that you pointed that out to me, I didn't do something right. I needed a couple of women. <laughs> an African-American <laughs> showrunner, producer. I didn't even think about oh, it. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's wonderful. But I want to say that it is, you know, we started out from the writer's perspective in the writer's room talking about the season at the beginning from a point of view of identity. Who are we? Who do we say we are? And who are we really? And so that's what the season has been about for us as we looked at each and every like character. Yeah. And so it is a pleasure for me to end the season and end this Office Hours segment with you two gentlemen. Mm. It is a pleasure. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank, Thank you. you.